Hi everyone, this circuit is a supercharger for digital IO pins. It can take a low voltage, low current signal from a microcontroller like the Arduino Uno or the ESP32. It then converts it into a high voltage, high current signal. So we can drive a water pump like this or maybe even a stepper motor or even better, a heavy DC motor with gear reduction so we can actually drive things. First, I am going to show you how the circuit works. Then I will follow by a breadboard build, followed by some testing and finally the demonstration of driving this heavy DC motor. This circuit consists of three stages. The first one is an inverted level shifter. Assuming a VCC is 10 volts and we have an ESP32 which drives at a maximum of 3.3 volts. Then this circuit, because it is inverted, turns the 3.3 volts into 0 volts and the 0 volts into 10 volts. Then by adding another one of these inverted level shifters, we can put the signal straight again, which now makes this 0 volts here at the input, 0 volts here at the output, 3.3 volts here is 10 volts here at the output. Now the only thing left to do is uh, the final stage, which turns the high voltage uh, low current signal into a high voltage high current signal. By using this uh, push-pull configuration made of a NPN and a PNP transistor pair. Now how does that work? Let's have a look at the first inverter. If there is zero volts coming from the microcontroller through this resistor, then this base of this transistor does not conduct and basically removes itself from the circuit. What's then left is the 10 volts here at VCC going through the resistor and straight to the output phase. If however there is a signal here, voltage greater than ground or greater than zero, then the transistor starts to conduct a lot of current. So everything coming here from this 10 volts through this resistor just plummets straight to ground, leaving absolutely nothing for the output stage, which then becomes zero volts. This then happens twice. Then the final stage, the push-pull configuration. If the output signal here is uh, zero volts, then the top transistor does nothing and the bottom transistor starts to conduct until the output signal is just as low as the, as the, as the ground here. If however the voltage is 10 volts, then the bottom transistor does nothing and the top one starts to, starts to conduct and only stops when the voltage here at the right is as high as the voltage here, which is 10. So it mirrors the voltage at the left side, but because of these two transistors it adds a lot of current capabilities. I believe it's now time to start the breadboard. This one.
This is the 10 volt power supply. For an input signal I use the PWM signal that comes from my oscilloscope. Now I add the first probe of my oscilloscope to the circuit so I can have a look at the PWM signal that goes here through the resistor into the first transistor. This is the circuit. This is 10 volts going into the circuit. And this is the incoming PWM signal. Now I add the second probe of my oscilloscope to the circuit so I can see the signal after it has been through the first stage. We can now see the second signal, which indeed is inverted. I will now move the second probe to the output of the second stage. The second signal now has the same phase as the input signal, which is exactly what we want. And now I need to have a look at the final output signal. The final output signal looks pretty good. I think we can do some testing now. And here we have it. With just a 3 volt input signal, I can now control this motor. And although the transistor is getting warm, it is not getting too hot. It can now drive 200 milliamps or 0.2 amps.